welcome to today's video. We're going to be starting this look with doing one side of the face nice and pretty, the other side kind of scary. So first we're going to start by priming our face. Today we are using the Benefit Professional, and then we're going to go in and put some foundation just on the right side of the face. I guess technically that's my left side, but the right side for the purpose of the video. I'm placing the foundation out with the brush, and then I like to go with the Beauty Blender just to smooth everything out and make it look a little bit more flawless. I'm now going in with some concealer. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Concealer. This is my absolute favorite. I pretty much will use it in all of my Halloween tutorials and regular ones for a while. So after I've done blending that in, we're going to go ahead in with the NYX Professional Makeup's Contour and Highlight Palette. I also use a cream and a powder for this. So I'm just going in with a gamma that beauty blender just to really contour out the cheek and just really make sure it looks very defined because the other side is going to be quite defined with that skeleton side. And now we're going to go ahead and do some brows. Today I'm using the Benefit Goof Proof Pencil. This has been my go-to lately. Prior to this, I was into the little pot, the little gel pots, but this is much, much easier to use. It's quicker and I absolutely love this product. Once you're finished with your brow, you want to put an eyeshadow base on. Today I am using the P. Louise eyeshadow base. And now I'm going to go in with this palette from NYX Cosmetics. This is the Warm Neutrals eyeshadow palette. I try to stick to the cool colors in here, even though this is a warm palette. Eye look is very simple. I just did two shades. I did a transition shade and a little bit darker. And that was it, you guys. I'm going to cut the crease just to make it a little bit cleaner. So I'm taking some of the concealer and just trying to stick closest to the crease line. Once I'm finished defining that, I'm going to go back in just with a whiter shade from that palette. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do for the actual eyeshadow for this look. This is not a focal point of the look. So I wanted to keep it pretty simple. I'm going with NYX Liquid Liner in black, and I'm just creating a nice winged line. Putting on some blush, I'm mixing these two shades. This is from the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush Palette. Popping on that one lash. I know I've been using these lashes in like every video just because they're so easy to use and I love them. They are from Flutter Lash in the style Intoxicating. As you can see, I just popped some eyeliner in the waterline. That was Melt Cosmetics 1978 liner. And then once I'm done lining the lips, I'm going in with this liquid lipstick from Melt Cosmetics in the shade Immortal. I'm using two Melt lipsticks. One is that red and one is this black just to outline and make it more of an ombre effect. I actually ended up going in later even darker to create the ombre effect so you can see that later on in the video. Now you can see the two different sides here. Now let's focus on the next side of the face. I'm just using a brush that doesn't have much product on it just to outline all the areas where black is going to be filled in later. I am using a reference picture. I always recommend doing that and actually one of the reference pictures was one of my own pictures, one of my own paintings from prior. I didn't fill in the black yet. That was just to give me an idea of where I wanted all the white to go and where I didn't want the white to be. So the two shades really that I'm using for this entire side of the face uh, as far as Mayron Paradise paints are the black and the white. That is primarily the colors that I'll use. I will place them down and then most of the skull is really shading and highlighting. So you'll get to see that throughout this video, but I'm just right now filling in all of the white space. If you've never used Mayron Paradise paints, just so you know, they are water activated. So you add a little water to them and they create this beautiful creamy texture. I'm using a beauty blender to just blend the two sides together. I didn't want a harsh line going down the middle of the face. So I really just wanted it to kind of diffuse into each other. Next, I'm going in with the black. Now I'm going to start to fill in those spaces. You can see the process of where the skull starts out so flat and so boring. And then by the end, it just looks so vibrant, and so textured and just so realistic. So just keep going. I know sometimes with skulls, it's kind of hard to see the end results ahead of time and to really want to continue, but definitely keep going and keep adding more and more dimension to the skull and it will really come to life. That's funny, a skull come to life. <laughs> okay, so let's focus on what we're doing now. We are blending in some of that black paint. I'm really placing down where I want the deepest parts of the black to be because again, we're going to be doing some shading later that'll make it more defined. Next, we're going to focus a little bit on placing where we want the teeth to go. 
This is a very easy way to do the teeth. You could potentially leave the teeth just like this. I have seen a lot of skulls, you know, really straightforward ones that look like this and you don't do anything else to them. But I do like to add a little bit more dimension to them later and you'll see the shading and highlighting that I do to create that look. Adding in a few different cracks in the skull and then filling in the nose. Again, all just on the left side. So I try to stick on this side and not go over on the other side too, too much. So now we're gonna go in with and do some shading and I'm using the Dark Matter shade from the Dark Matter stack from Melt Cosmetics. This is what I was talking about where I talk about shading in the teeth. I'm trying to create the illusion that the gums are receding. So I do that a little bit. I'll come back to them just in a second. That's just my nature. I just hop around. So I'm doing some more shading with that eyeshadow all around the face again to try and give it dimension. Dimension is pretty much the key uh, term we'll be using here today um, because you want to give this skull as much dimension as possible. I went in and just used this red shade from the Morphe 35B palette. I wanted to bring a little bit more of the red to this side. The other side will have some red as well, but I really thought it brought the whole look together, but this is optional. Let's do some highlighting. Every time that there's going to be a shadow, we want to make sure that there's a highlight as well. And I love using this eyeliner for highlights. It's super easy to use and it's very white. So I'm using this uh, from NYX Cosmetics. This is the white eyeliner. And I'm just going everywhere that I think that the light would naturally hit the skull. I like to show you this little technique here where I, where I put it on there, tap it, diffuse it, and then also just keep doing that until I think it looks realistic. Add some texture, tap it out, add some texture, tap it out. You really just want to make it your own until it looks exactly how you want it to be. Often with skulls, you will see that if you put the white paradise paints around the eyes, even if you set it with an eyeshadow, it still looks like it's not fully black. So I like to go in and use an actual eyeliner. Um, and this is from NYX Cosmetics. This is just the darkest black eyeliner that I have. And I like to fill in those spaces. You can see how much darker the eyes look now. And it doesn't crease a lot if you also add some eyeshadow to it as well. And then we're going to move on to the other side of the face. This is the last step. This is creating those tears. Again, this is optional, but I really thought it brought the look together. I'm first outlining where I want the teardrops to be. I'm trying to shade one of the sides of each of the tiers just to make them look a little bit more realistic. I actually used a reference picture from Google of somebody else drawing, not on their body, but an actual drawing of tiers. And that's what I used to help me try and figure out how I wanted to make this the most realistic. I'm making these tiers a little bit red, again, to pull the whole look together and be a little bit more cohesive. So I'm just placing that on the tiers themselves. And then gonna do a little bit more shading that's really the theme of this whole look is adding some shading, diffusing it, adding some highlighting and can keep going with that process. Once I have done all the shading on the tiers, as you can see, I wanted to put a little bit more shading underneath the tiers as well. I also didn't feel as though the red eyeshadow was pigmented enough. So I actually went in with that eyeliner from Kylie Cosmetics just to make it a little bit more red, a little bit more vibrant of a red. I'm going to go back with that black and try and create just a little bit darker of an edge just to make it look like it really is sitting on top of the skin and then blending out again. We need to do some highlights. You guessed it. So now we're going to go in again with the eyeliner. I'm just taking on a different brush just because I wanted the texture to be a little bit different and creating that highlight as though the light is beaming down on the tears. I love how this came out, you guys. Definitely look at a reference picture. I will link the reference picture that I used from Google below in the description box. Lastly, you're going to do some shading underneath the tiers to really make it look as though they're realistic. Once you're done with this step, you are done with the entire look, you guys. You're just going to pop in some contacts if you have them. These ones are from Camo Eyes. I absolutely love them. I will link in the description box all the accessories that I put as well. I hope that you like this look and thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.